the spacing of your reactors. And now I know that my drawings are not going to be to scale. Okay, I have plenty of them out there. But <clears throat> let's say you, uh, you've got a starship formation, all right? And you're using ping pong balls. The ping pong balls okay, are going to be uh, positioned accordingly, right? And then you're going to have the, the one that's on the top, okay, that goes in the center, right? Well, if you don't have them spaced right, then you don't get to build that plasmatic wall, okay? You just won't get to build the plasmatic walls that you need, okay? Because there's going to be a gap, okay? You might get, uh, you know, you might have one that's close enough and it's going to interact with the next one, but then you got one that's over here, okay? And now you've got a gap for your plasma to escape from, right? Whereas in this direction right here, that plasma can only go in one direction in a circle, in a sphere, and it's going to try to get out, okay, but you've got it contained. So you got to remember that it's going and going in every direction that we know inside of your ping pong ball, okay, and as soon as it fills up all of the avenues that it can, it can travel in, inside of there, that's when the plasmatic pressure starts to squeeze down. It's kind of like wringing out a washcloth. Okay, it's twisting that energy inside of there so tight, okay, that you get that tight little twist in the center that allows it to, you know, collapse down and then it expresses itself outwards and then you get your outer energy field, right? Well, your spacing is key and the best way to figure it out, all right, is to take your capacitor ring, for instance. All right. If you take a capacitor ring and you measure the distance straight across, okay, that's the diameter. I know this is a math class. I assume everybody is in the fifth grade, so please do not be offended. This is the diameter, okay? The distance across. The circumference is the distance around, okay? And then the radius is from the center point, okay, to the outer edge, okay? That's the radius. Now, what you need to do is you need to add the diameter to the radius. So you can just measure it straight across, divide it by two, take that answer, okay? Save it off to the side. Now you take the diameter before you divided it by two, all right? And add it, take the diameter and add it to your radius. And this gives you one and a half times the distance of your fields, okay? So what you're, you're trying to figure out here is if this is your ping pong ball, right? You want your next ping pong ball to basically, you're going to take half of this circle here and apply it here, okay? Put the same distance. Right? Well, this is your outer energy field barrier based off of the diameter of your ping pong ball. Right? So when you place another ping pong ball on the other side, right, and it's one and a half times the distance of its diameter, that energy field is going to interact.
right here is a Vesca Pisces. This is how you interlock your fields. Okay, this point and this point is where they're locked in. Right? So now let's put all three of these together. I'm going to draw one layer. Now, obviously, this is a, a an estimation. I would measure it, and I would use a, a compass, or you know, more often than not, I use um, like lids, round lids, because they're handy. I've got them everywhere, and I've got all sorts of different sizes of circles, and it's solid. Okay, the compass that I get is, you know, really cheap for the schools. You know, they sell them at Walmart, and they suck ass. Okay, but so we're gonna go. We're gonna take this distance, and we're gonna add it. All right, we're gonna do uh, one and a half. Okay, so I've got from the center. I need to make another circle that is going to be basically the same size as the other circle all right so if I put it there oops we're going to I need to move these closer Okay. Remember, equal distance apart and equal distance from the center. Now, remember, this is your ping pong ball, right? The ping pong ball, when it's full of liquid, is the center core. Not your plasma, it's the center core. Okay? And so when you make your field interactions, oh, come on. Work with me here, Pen. Now you can see the Trinity. It looks like three eggs. So now, because we've interlocked this field here and here, here and here, okay, and here and here, you've got the three. So in my zoom in on this, okay, it's actually going to look like this. How am I doing this here? Doo, doo, doo. Uh -huh. That's why. Whoops. Oh, well. Even if I just put the circles together. Okay. This point, this point, and this point are all the joining points, right? You also have that one there, that one there. It takes two to tango. It takes two to lock, right? When you do this, you create this shape right here in the middle, right? Now, we put your reactor over the top, right? And now you've made yourself a capstone to keep that energy from uh, escaping upwards, okay? Because remember, we're looking at this from the top. If I drew pictures of these circles, okay? And, you know, let's say, uh, you know, all of the circles are the same size, right? 
but you want to depict that one is closer, right? Closer to the observer, and you are the observer, this circle would actually appear bigger. The top circle would appear bigger, okay? If you had, you know, another one on the other side, okay, that, that circle would actually appear smaller because it's further away. Does that make sense? Any device that you make and you put it into uh, sacred geometry patterns, be prepared for the consequences, okay? Good or bad. If you want it to be good, great, okay? 